Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The United States border may be unmarked in many places, but it is under constant surveillance. Since its inception in 1924, the U.S. Border Patrol has been tasked with preventing illegal crossings. During World War II, Border Patrol was moved under the umbrella of the Department of Justice. And in 1952, for the first time, illegal entrants were subject to arrest. You will see the technology, vehicles, and methods that the U.S. Customs and Border Protection use in order to do their job. From helicopters to robots and snowmobiles, agents have the latest technology to keep our nation secure. The U.S.-Mexico border is nearly 2,000 miles long, It is one of the busiest in the world, allowing in more than 300 million people annually. However, some of these crossings are illegal. In 2016, at the Tucson Air Show in Arizona, the air and marine operations of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection demonstrated how they track and follow a car that has entered the country illegally. In Black Hawk helicopters, wearing armor and equipped with guns, these border agents are staged for a swift descent to make an arrest. But first, the culprit must be cornered. A smaller helicopter, piloted by Arizona police, confronts the offending vehicle. In an insane low-altitude, high-speed chase, the chopper gets the car to stop. Other Border Patrol agents in trucks surround it. Now is the time for the air and marine operatives in the Blackhawks to strike. Lowering themselves by rope to the ground, they get into an offensive position to make the arrest. Border Patrol is responsible not only for protection on land, but also for the rivers, lakes, and more open bodies at the country's perimeter. In the waters of Bellingham, Washington, near the U.S.-Canada border, agents patrol in 26 feet long safe boats. SAFE stands for Secure All-Around Flotation Equipped. The SAFE manufacturer says these vessels are constructed for a long life of rigorous field use. The boat's aluminum hull is a virtually unsinkable platform. This comes in handy in case of a collision with land or another boat. Specially trained agents are often tasked with driving these high-powered speedboats 
to confront people illegally crossing U.S. borders by water. Occasionally, migrants will attempt to cross into the U.S. through underground tunnels. This is also a problem with drug cartels using tunnels and pipes to transport drugs into the country. To prevent risk to human life, Border Patrol agents use remote-controlled robots to investigate these underground passageways before going in themselves. A robot explores a pipe at the U.S.-Mexico border in Arizona. The robot operates like a tiny tank with treads that can easily maneuver over dirt and debris. Equipped with a flashlight and a camera, the robot relays what it sees back to the agents in real time. In this demonstration, the robot travels through a pipe just wide enough to fit a human. Once we can send a robot in first and clear the tunnel, that takes a lot of the safety and the unknown into consideration and can clear the tunnel for us. Any way you look at it, we still have to verify and validate that the tunnel penetrates the border to be classified as a cross-border tunnel. So eventually a person will need to enter the tunnel the way current standards are. The robots keep agents out of harm's way. Many tunnels are poorly built and could collapse. In colder locations, like here in Wellesley, New York, border agents use snow technology to police the U.S.-Canada border. For shorter distances or to reach a part of the trail inaccessible by vehicle, these help with weight distribution so agents can walk atop the white stuff without falling into it. When traveling long distances, snowmobiles are needed. This terrain is covered in ice and snow in the winter time. Snowmobiles have the ability to navigate the windy trails through the steep mountainous terrain common in this region. Snowmobiles are also the vehicle of choice during Arctic military exercises. For the past five decades, the U.S. military has conducted practice missions under different code names, such as Jack Frost and Brim Frost. It is difficult to reach this remote tundra, and the necessary equipment is flown in thanks to the U.S. Air Force C-130 Hercules. Equipped with retractable skis, this aircraft is unique in its ability to land on ice and snow or a regular runway. The C-130 Hercules is a prime transport for airdropping troops and equipment into hostile areas. The success of these planes in the difficult and dangerous Arctic environment led to the conversion of more Hercs for the U.S. Navy to support the operation of the numerous research stations in Antarctica.
when flying is not an option. Troops are often moved through the Arctic by ferry. In these exercises in Norway, Marines offload from a transport ferry to practice cold weather and mountain warfare. The ferries also carry essential equipment. Notice the snowmobiles that disembark are disguised by white netting. The Marines themselves also wear camouflage that reflects the white, snowy landscape around them. The ability to maneuver easily in sub-zero temperatures is of utmost importance for the U.S. military to remain agile and prepared for conflict in colder regions. The U.S. Army Engineer Research and Development Center is constantly working to develop tracked vehicles that can slip slide and ultimately survive on ice in snowy regions. From vehicles able to move through feet of snow to unmanned vehicles that can travel through a thick forest, these experiments help to provide mobility solutions for a broad range of terrain challenges observed by warfighters abroad. One of those terrain challenges is learning how to drive on snow and ice. In the winter of 2020 in Japan, U.S. Marines got behind the wheel of this joint light tactical vehicle to practice maneuvering in the snow. It would be essential for the soldier driving to know how to accelerate turn and brake on snow without losing control of the vehicle. It's also important for soldiers stationed in northern regions to know how their equipment will operate in sub-zero temperatures. In February 2019, U.S. Marines conducted Exercise Snow Panzer in Norway. This training tested the Marines' proficiency in operating a drone in the snow, wind, and cold. Practicing with equipment in cold weather is uncomfortable, but important to learn how both the operator and the equipment will perform in wintry weather. If a group of Marines needs to move quickly from one Arctic location to another, a special vehicle called a Bandvang is used. Developed by the Swedes for troop transport, this vehicle looks like a train on treads. Compared to tires, treads are able to grip the snow better. Over 11,000 Bandvangs have been produced and are in more than 37 countries worldwide. From protecting our borders in warmer climates, to defending on much colder fronts, the U.S. military is trained to be prepared for a call to action, no matter the temperature. From helicopters that can track anyone crossing the U.S.-Mexico border, to snowmobiles that can zip through icy paths in mountainous terrain, you can run, but you cannot escape the technology at the disposal of the U.S. forces.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.